Wow. Fire tornado. Slow-mo guys light a half inch of kerosene and create a vortex with 12 box fans. Of course I wanted to try this at home, but the fire department across the street I'm sure is not going to take kindly to any fire tornadoes. I'm in my office in downtown Chicago. So is there an easier way for me to recreate this, maybe digitally, simulated inside the computer? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with SolidWorks computer-aided design software, create the setup, and then simulate it using computational fluid dynamics, or CFD. Let's see if we can create a virtual tornado. Not only that, let's answer the question, how do we know how to position the fans, at what angle? And then do I really need 12 fans? What if I want to recreate this with fewer fans? Let's simulate digitally what we need to create the fire tornado. Of course, the first step in a digital simulation is having a computer model of the system. Here I'm creating a circular pattern of my fans to get my 12 box fans. I also have a parametric definition, meaning that I have a number that controls the angle offset from perpendicular. Setting up a fluid flow simulation with my first initial guess at the fan location shows a pretty decent tornado, but kind of wide. What I'm going to do is adjust the angle and move the fans closer to perpendicular to create a more narrow, focused funnel action. In fact, the closer I get with the fans being perpendicular, the more narrow the funnel develops. Here you can see the top view and the right hand view of the vortex. This one here at 88 degrees is actually pretty close, but I can also go too far. If I get too close to perpendicular, I'm not gonna get a very wide vortex and I get a very, very narrow column. It's not as interesting. So there's definitely a fundamental relationship between the angle of the fan and the width of the tornado. Modern software allows me to parametrically evaluate this, meaning I can ask the software to evaluate tornadoes from 70 to 90 degrees of angle. I've set that up, I let it run for a few hours, and what I see are numerical results. For example, I can see where the highest turbulence is, which is the third design point, or the 86 degree configuration. Here's a top-down view as I step from 90 down to 70 degrees. Here's a side view of what we call streamlines, and you can see that as we get too wide, the vortex kind of falls apart. There's definitely a happy spot between 90 and about 85 degrees, and I'm going to go with 86 degrees as my final answer, and here are the results of that 86 degree configuration. What you're visualizing here are the velocity contours, that's the colors, but you're also seeing the flow patterns to understand what the shape of the flow is going to look like. So now that we understand we need about 86 degrees, how many fans do I need? The slow-mo guys used 12 fans, but as I mentioned before, what if I want to get away with fewer? Let's set up another parametric study and evaluate anywhere from 1 to 12 fans and see what I need to create the vortex. So what have we found out? First of all, we need about a four degree tilt off of perpendicular to get a good tornado like the slow-mo guys had. We also saw that we only need four box fans in that configuration to create a minimal tornado. Much, much less expensive to go out and build this if we were going to, if we had the space. So why is this so important? Obviously tools like this allow a designer or a product engineer to simulate the behavior of the real world before they go and build a prototype. In this case, if I was designing tornado kits, I could decrease the cost of creating the kit by only including four fans and providing exact instructions as to how to use the fan to create the maximum effect. So tools like these are used all over the world in modern design and engineering to make sure the products and designs work right before they go to market. Thanks a lot. Thanks to the Slow Mo guys for showing us some awesome science. I'll see you next time.